Today I'm going to show you how to start a garden from scratch with seeds so you can get quick food and minimize weeds and have a super productive garden. Fairy sprinkle seed wand. They're mystery seeds and I do love a mystery garden. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome, my name is Holly and I garden in Perth, Australia. And my gardens are usually a little bit wild but full of food. I'm also going to share why I'm not using mulch this year and what I'm doing instead, as well as a few extra tips on how to manage pests in the garden. So stick around for that, but for now, let's plant some seeds. To start off with, we have zucchini. Now these are a large plant, they take up a lot of space. If I was to pop them straight in the middle of the garden bed, that's taking up half of my garden bed and I'm not going to have as much room to plant other things. And I like to plant a lot of things. So where I put my large plants like zucchinis and, um, and romanesco or broccoli or anything like that are in the corners of the garden bed. That way the plant can start here and it can kind of sort of come over the edge of the garden bed and I don't take up as much space. So we're going to pop some zucchini and I have got some golden zucchini from down to earth and I'll leave in the comments um, where I get most of my seeds as well as later on in the video I'll show you how I actually save seeds um, and there's a few really really easy ways to do it. First off I need to wet down these garden beds so let's do that. Give them a nice little soak and we'll wet, water them in afterwards as well. Golden zucchini seeds and I'm going to plant them about here. So all I'm going to do is create a little divot in the, in the soil, place them in. Um, if you don't know which way up seeds go, then put them in flat. These ones, the zucchinis, they sort of grow from the pointy end up. So I could place them in that way, but if you just put them in flat that way, if you've got it wrong, it's only got 50, it only has to go 50% of the way to right itself. It doesn't have to do a full 360. Um, and then we just put some soil on top and I'm only putting um, a little bit of soil on top. That's the key. You don't want to bury them too deep. You only put as much soil on top as the seed is in size. So those seeds were just under a centimetre in size. So I'm only putting just under a centimetre of soil on top of them and then lightly pat it down. Now I don't put labels where everything is, which I probably should do. That is something that would be a good idea, but I just don't do it. So it is what it is. We're going to start off with this garden bed and I'm going to try and plant as all of the seeds in here first. So I sort of remember where things are, but later on I'll continuously add seeds and put them in. And the reason that I can do that is because I do save a lot of seeds. So I have hundreds of free seeds. So I'm not worried about the cost of um, wasting seeds if I double up or put too many in. Um, because I'm constantly saving my own seeds. And the other thing is, is that if I do overplant and there's too many in one area or they all pop up, then I can move them about into different areas, um, different gardens, or I can just start harvesting them early. So things like lettuces and radishes, um, I can start harvesting the leaves off them and harvesting them young to make room for the other things as they grow. And my little birdhouse keeps a good shelf. The oh the Coco Zell, that's my favorite. So that's the striped one. And I might put one in opposite end of the garden bed. So this um, brassica here, this will be leaving once I save the seeds from it. And all I'll do is just cut it off at the base, take that out. So I'm not going to be disturbing the soil around it, which means I can plant my seeds in here. All right, so I'm going to plant in maybe two. I'll do one here and one here. And then if I have to move one, if they both pop up and I have to move one, that's okay. Because the other thing is, is that there are bugs and I am overcompensating for some of these. If it was to get eaten by bugs, it's okay. There's others. Plus, I can always plant more. Oh, I also have these seeds. 
can't wait to sew. This is literally the scraps that I cleaned up out of my seed trays. I have no idea what these are. I can see just from recognizing seeds that they're tomato and chili or capsicum seeds. So they're definitely warm climate seeds, but I have no idea what they are. These are just from the bottom of the seed tray from years and years of collecting seeds. So um, they're mystery seeds and I do love a mystery garden. So let's sow some of these. So as you can see, some of them, the little furry ones, are the tomatoes. There's some chili or capsicum and what looks like radish. And we are just gonna seed fairy these. So I'm just going to put them like that and we'll see what pops up. Wait seeds in my pocket and then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of soil. Oh, the people that love planting in stray rows are going to hate this, but I love it. All right, so the other thing that I've got is some cucumbers. Cucumbers like airflow and they like climbing. So you could either put a trellis up or I've got these poles here. So I'm going to be putting some string lines on here and growing some cucumbers up the poles. Having them on the outsides is going to allow you to have that airflow. So I always put cucumbers on the outside of the garden bed. Now these ones here are special ones. These are Indian cucumbers and they love the heat. And I have a lot of heat here in Perth. So I found this variety worked really well. I got these seeds from Julie at Down to Earth Life and I grew them and I also then saved my own. So these are, I guess, the second generation. These ones are saved from seeds in my garden and I'm going to continue to save seeds from them because they are a really good cucumber for a hot climate. So they're a brown cucumber, they're called Puna, Puna Kira. I'm not sure how you say that, but I'm going to pop them right here and I'll plant a couple in this corner, pat them down in a couple in another corner. Maybe this corner. I've also got some capsicum. So capsicum is notoriously quite hard to grow from seed. Um, it really wants a warm climate and it's often one that is better to grow in seed trays than direct sow, but we're not doing that this year. So if it pops up, it pops up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I save these seeds so I have heaps of seeds for free. So capsicums, I, they don't tend to get as big, so I'll usually put them in the front of the row. Now, when I talk about the front versus the back of the row, it's depending on the sun. So the sun in my garden comes from this side and it rises over there and it ends on this side. So anything I plant in the front is going to block the sun for things over here at the back. So I plant all my shorter things at the front, things like edible flowers, capsicums, herbs and stuff like that uh, and that way they're not overshadowing one the rest of the garden beds and two whatever's growing in this garden so that's how I determine which is the front and the back is the which way the sun is going so let's put a few of these in so you get radish from seed to table in 30 days. It's one of the quickest things you can grow. So that's why I sprinkle it in all my garden beds. And it grows before any of these other things are even taking up space. So what we do is we just come in here, sprinkle a few. And again, these are tiny seeds, so it doesn't matter if they're not very deep in the soil. And I kind of remember <laughs> I kind of remember. I've got things on the corners and I've got a few things running through the middle. So that's where I just come in sort of even more in the gaps and just sprinkle in a line or in a patch. And then we have some gap fillers and the last gap filler, are my lettuce seeds. So all I did was dried out the lettuce flowers upside down in a paper bag and they are all falling out in the bottom of the bag, but because I just left them on the sticks, super easy, low maintenance way to save seeds, 
I now have a fairy sprinkle seed wand. So I can go like this. We sprinkle some seeds everywhere. Some for you, some for you. Now the reason I'm not using mulch this year is because I've had trouble with it breeding slaters, it popping up a lot of seed, and because I plant my gardens so densely, it covers and protects the soil anyway, so that is what I'm doing, planting more. I really need to get rid of this mound of soil, but it does make a good seed. So as you can see, these have already popped up, I didn't have to do anything, I very low tech seed saving here, I just buried a rotten fruit, it broke down over winter and then the seeds started popping up as the weather warms up. So I have quite a few of these um, growing in here. These are around squash. So I will move some of these into other parts of the garden once they get a few more leaves. So I don't want to move disturb them yet. They've just popped up. Once they get about three or four more leaves, I can start putting them in other areas of my garden. And I've got free seeds, seedlings that I didn't even have to sow or do anything with. So seed saving doesn't have to be super complicated. You can literally just bury bug-eaten vegetables and fruit in your garden beds in situ. You can let things go to seed in situ, or you can dry them, pop them in a paper bag, pop them in a jar, um, and use them next season. And if you are growing from seed, and it is a lot more inexpensive way to do things, to experiment, to make mistakes, because you aren't spending so much money. You know, one tomato has so many seeds in it and I literally just bury a tomato in the ground and then they pop up and I just move them and then I have free tomatoes. I have in here some used coffee grounds so I can pick these up from my local cafe they just leave them out for free and this is the only thing I found that works for protecting my little seedlings and seeds so it's the most effective thing from all the testing it has come back a little bit acidic but that's completely fine for my gardens because my gardens tend to be a little bit alkaline. So I just sprinkled coffee grounds around the plant as well as a little bit on the leaves as well and I find this helps with slugs, snails and slaters. Um, even grasshoppers. I also got my mum onto it in New Zealand where there's a lot more slug and snail pressure and she is having so much success with it. So I hope this helps.